Hi, I'm Dana. Before I dive into my story, don't forget to like and subscribe for more. So, there I was at Harper & Co., the marketing firm that's been my battleground and playground for the past five years. Creative, driven, they used to say about me. That day my boss called me in. I could feel my heart pounding, a mix of anxiety and excitement. You've earned this, Dana. Congratulations on your promotion, he said, beaming at me. I walked out, my feet barely touching the ground. But not everyone shared my joy. Mark, my colleague, or as I'd soon find out, my adversary, was eyeing the corner office I was about to occupy. At first, it was just whispers, ones I tried to dismiss. Did you hear how Dana got her promotion? I overheard in the break room. The words stung, but I brushed them off, focusing on my new responsibilities. But those whispers grew louder, more malicious. You know, I heard it wasn't just her work that got her there. Their laughter was like a slap in the face. I tried to keep my cool, but inside I was reeling. It wasn't just petty office gossip. This was character assassination. Meetings became battlefields, my ideas now questioned, not for their merit, but for the rumors that clouded them. One afternoon, I caught a part of their conversation. Come on, Mark, you seriously believe she earned that promotion fair and square? That was Lisa, the office gossip. You kidding? I've seen how she and the boss get along. A little too cozy, if you ask me, Mark sneered. That was it. I was hurt, angry, but more than that, I was determined. This wasn't just about clearing my name. It was about standing up to workplace toxicity. I wasn't going to let Mark or anyone else tarnish my hard work with their baseless rumors. The office dynamics had shifted. Colleagues who once greeted me warmly now offered nothing but averted gazes and half-hearted smiles. It was isolating, to say the least. Even my close work friend Jenny seemed hesitant. Dana, are these rumors... I mean, they can't be true, right? Jenny's voice was laced with doubt. I felt a mix of disappointment and resolve. No, Jenny, they aren't. And I'll prove it. That day, I stayed late, poring over my past projects, compiling every bit of evidence that showcased my hard work and dedication. It was going to be a long fight, but I was ready. I had truth and integrity on my side, and I wasn't going to back down. I knew I needed allies, and I had to start by winning back trust, one colleague at a time. Mike, you've seen my work on the Henderson account. You know I put in the hours, I said to one of my doubting colleagues. Yeah, Dana, I know. It's just... The rumors are... Unfounded and hurtful, Mike. That's what they are. And I need your support in this. It wasn't going to be easy, but I was determined to reclaim my reputation and stand up against the toxic culture that Mark was fostering. This was just the beginning, but I was ready for the fight. And that's where my story of struggle and triumph begins. Stick around for the next chapter, where things really start to heat up. Remember to like and subscribe for more. It was another busy day at the office when I overheard a conversation that stopped me in my tracks. Lisa, a colleague I always got along with, was whispering to Tom. You know it was Mark who started the rumors about Dana, right? Lisa said, not noticing I was within earshot. I felt like I'd been punched in the gut. We weren't best friends but I never thought he'd stoop so low. The rest of the day was a blur. I couldn't focus. The thought of someone so close betraying me was eating me alive. That night, I lay awake, my mind racing. I couldn't let this slide. It was time for action. The next day, I walked into the office with a plan. I started by casually chatting with colleagues, fishing for any information about Mark and his rumors. Hey, have you heard anything about me recently? Any... Weird stories or something? I asked Jenny, another colleague, trying to sound nonchalant. Yeah, some strange talk about how you got your promotion, Jenny replied, looking uncomfortable. I didn't believe it, though. I thanked her and moved on. Piece by piece, I was gathering a clearer picture of Mark's deceit. Later, I bumped into Mark at the coffee machine. Big day, huh? I said, trying to sound friendly. Yeah, just another day in paradise. Mark responded, smirking. He had no idea what I knew. Then I made my move. I heard some crazy rumors about how I got my promotion. Can you believe people think I would do such things? Mark's face changed for a split second before he regained his composure. People talk, Dana. You know how it is. But his reaction was all I needed. I knew he was guilty. It wasn't concrete evidence, but it was a start. Over the next few days, I gathered more evidence. I collected emails, 
testimonies from other colleagues, anything that could link Mark to the rumors. One day, I was in the break room with Mark and a few others. I decided it was time to set a trap. You know, Mark, I've been thinking about these rumors, and it's just so hard to figure out who would start such nasty things, I said, eyeing him carefully. Yeah, rumors are such a pain. They can really ruin someone's reputation, you know? Mark replied, not realizing he was walking into my trap. But why would anyone do that? What could they gain? I pushed further. Maybe they're jealous, or they think they deserve the promotion more, Mark said. And then, as if realizing he said too much, quickly added, I mean, that's what someone might think, right? Bingo. His slip-up was the small triumph I needed. That night, I reviewed everything I had collected. The emails, the testimonies, and now Mark's veiled confession. It was clear as day. Mark was behind the rumors. It was time to bring this evidence to light. But I needed to be careful. I couldn't just confront him without a plan. I knew I had to be strategic about my next move. So I spent the weekend planning my next steps, making sure every angle was covered. Mark had no idea what was coming for him. All right, strap in, folks. This is where the real game begins. I had to be smart about my next moves. I started by forming alliances. First, there was Sophie, a co-worker who always had my back. Sophie, I need someone I can trust. I'm planning something. Big. I whispered to her one day. Count me in, Dana. What's the plan? Sophie replied, her eyes lighting up with intrigue. Then there was Mr. Henderson, our supervisor, who always believed in fair play. Mr. Henderson, I think you should be aware. Some unsavory rumors about me are circulating, and I have reason to believe Mark is behind them. He looked concerned. I trust your judgment, Dana. Keep me updated. With my team in place, it was time to turn the tables on Mark. I started playing the long game, showcasing my skills and integrity at every opportunity. I wanted everyone to see the contrast between Mark's petty behavior and my professionalism. In meetings, I made sure to subtly highlight Mark's unprofessional behavior. Did everyone receive the report I sent out? I know Mark was supposed to distribute them last week, I'd say, watching as he squirmed under the scrutiny. During presentations, I shone. I put in extra hours, nailed every project, and made sure my work was impeccable. My goal was clear. Make Mark's rumors look ridiculous compared to the reality of my hard work. Then came the setup. Mark was starting to feel the heat. His actions scrutinized more than ever. One day, in a team meeting, I casually mentioned an idea I knew Mark would try to take credit for. Maybe we should consider a more aggressive marketing strategy for the new product line. I was thinking something along the lines of, sure enough, a few days later, Mark presented my idea as his own, but this time I was ready. Interesting proposal, Mark. It sounds remarkably similar to what I suggested last week. Remember everyone? The room fell silent. The looks on my colleagues' faces said it all. Mark was caught red-handed. I watched as Mark's facade began to crumble. He was becoming more isolated by the day. I almost felt bad for him. Almost. As my evidence against Mark piled up, I knew the final confrontation was imminent. But I couldn't rush it. I had to be sure everything was in place. I double-checked my recordings, my notes, the testimonials. Everything had to be perfect. Are we ready for this? Sophie asked me one day, her voice a mix of excitement and nervousness. I nodded, feeling a surge of adrenaline. We're ready. It's time to end this once and for all. I arranged a meeting under the guise of discussing a new project. Mark, unsuspecting, agreed to attend. Little did he know, he was walking into the lion's den. As the day of the confrontation approached, I felt a mix of fear and excitement. This was it, the moment of truth. I was about to face off against the man who tried to ruin my career. But I wasn't just doing this for me anymore. I was doing it for anyone who's ever been wronged in the workplace. It was bigger than me. Bigger than Mark. It was about setting things right. I called a meeting, saying it was about a new project. But the real agenda? Exposing Mark. I saw it as my moment of truth. A chance to reclaim my reputation. The room was set. Everyone important was there, including Mark, who had no idea what was about to hit him. As the meeting began, I started off with the project discussion. But quickly, I shifted gears. So, while we're all here, there's something important I need to address, I said, turning to face Mark directly. It's come to my attention that there have been some harmful rumors about me. 
Rumors that I believe Mark has been spreading. Mark laughed nervously. What? Dana, I think you're mistaken. I've done no such thing. But I was ready. I laid out the emails, the recorded conversations, the testimonies from other colleagues. Everything. This email chain shows you discussing these rumors with others, Mark. And this recording. I played the clip where he almost admitted it. The room was silent. You could cut the tension with a knife. Mark, is this true? Mr. Henderson asked, his voice stern. Mark was squirming now. No, these... these are out of context. I stayed calm, presenting each piece of evidence methodically. I could see the disbelief in everyone's eyes as the truth began to dawn on them. That's enough, Dana. We'll take it from here, Mr. Henderson said finally, after what felt like an eternity. He looked disappointed, not just in Mark, but in the situation. Mark tried one last time to defend himself, but his words fell flat. The evidence was overwhelming. In the end, the supervisors took a moment to discuss privately. When they returned, their decision was clear. Mark were very disappointed. Spreading false rumors and creating a hostile work environment is something we take very seriously, Mr. Henderson said. They didn't fire him on the spot, but they stripped him of some of his responsibilities and put him on a strict probation. It was clear his credibility was shot. As for me, I felt a mixture of relief and vindication. It was over, and truth had prevailed. Thank you, Dana, for bringing this to our attention. We admire your professionalism in handling this situation. After the meeting, colleagues came up to me, apologizing for ever doubting me. I appreciated their words, but it wasn't their fault. This was all Mark's doing. As the day wound down, I realized something important. This wasn't just about clearing my name. It was about standing up for what's right. I had shown Mark and everyone else that truth and integrity always win in the end. Mark faced disciplinary actions, and his once bright reputation dimmed significantly. It was a talk of the office, how he fell from grace. Meanwhile, I, well, I was finally vindicated. My colleagues began looking at me with new respect, and I could feel the change in the air. A few days after the big reveal, Mark approached me. It was an awkward encounter, to say the least. Dana, I... I want to apologize for everything, Mark said, his voice lacking its usual confidence. I looked at him, remembering all the stress and hurt his lies had caused. Your apology is noted, Mark, but some actions have irreversible consequences. I hope you learn from this. I walked away, leaving Mark standing there, a picture of regret. There was no room for reconciliation, not after everything that had happened. You handled that like a champ, Dana. How do you feel? Empowered, Sophie. It's like I've closed a dark chapter, and I'm ready for what's next. That's exactly what I did. I threw myself into my work, taking on new projects and challenges. My standing in the company was stronger than ever. My promotion, which had once been a point of controversy, was now a testament to my resilience and capability. As I sat in my office one evening, looking over the city lights, I reflected on the entire ordeal. It was challenging, stressful, and at times, downright painful. But it also taught me so much about myself, about standing up for what's right, and about the kind of person I want to be. Hardships often prepare ordinary people for an extraordinary destiny, Mr. Henderson had said to me once, and he couldn't have been more right. This experience had shown me that with determination and truth on your side, you can overcome just about anything. So there you have it, my story of overcoming workplace toxicity and coming out stronger on the other side. I hope it inspires you to stand up for yourself and never let anyone dim your light. All right, that brings us to the end of Dana's story, a tale of resilience and standing up to workplace toxicity. But before you go, here's a thought-provoking question that I really want to hear your opinions on. In Dana's shoes, facing Mark and his damaging rumors, would you have chosen to reject his apology? This question delves deep into our values on forgiveness, professional integrity, and the consequences of harmful actions in a work environment. Would you prioritize personal closure or make a stand on principle like Dana did? And what do you think this decision says about a person's character and their approach to conflict resolution in a professional setting? Drop your thoughts, experiences, and opinions in the comments section below. This isn't just about what you do, but why you do it. Let's get a conversation going that really digs into the nuances of such situations. And hey, 
If you found yourself captivated by Dana's story and the moral dilemmas it presents, don't forget to show some love. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and click the notification bell. Your engagement not only supports the channel, but also keeps you connected with our community, where stories like Dana's are brought to life. Thanks for being a part of this journey. Your interaction, your stories, and your opinions are what make this channel a vibrant space for sharing and growth. So let's keep the conversation going. See you in the comments, and stay tuned for more content that makes you think, feel, and maybe even challenge your perspectives.